we got a Phantom 3 standard that's crashed and the uh, yaw arm have completely broke off so what we're gonna do today is actually do a yaw arm replacement with a new one that I the new yaw arm replacement I got from my website the link is below <coughs> this is a flex cable right here you're gonna need this one for this standard and the standard the Phantom 3 standard and the Phantom 3 uh, Advance or Pro uses a different type of flex cable. This particular one has a two uh, single input where the Phantom Advance and Pro has the uh, two input to the logic board. What you're going to need for this would be a Phillips screwdriver, a hex screw, and uh, the replacement parts. And what we have here is the Allen wrench and additional screws for this. I'm gonna go ahead. What we need to do is actually to remove. We're gonna take the gimbal off, and you have these uh, drop pins connected here. We need to free that, and DJI does provide two additional ones. Okay. So once you get the uh, the pin fastened out, you, what you're gonna do is go ahead and actually loosen the uh, the drop uh, shock absorber. So squeeze it, pinch it out. Okay. Put this in the out of play. Okay, then you have these two slots right here. This okay. Put that out of play. This will enable us to access the antenna. We need that removed in order to replace everything else. Okay. So now let's go and access the back side of this. Go ahead and remove the plastic cover, the antenna. Now you have these connectors here. Be really careful. Just go ahead and use your fingernail just to loosen it. Now that this is out of the way, go ahead and put the drone out of play. Now what we're going to be concentrating on is just rebuilding the gimbal with the part that we have. And what we have here is the main logic board in the gimbal housing, the flex uh, cable replacement. We've got a new yaw arm. We have the screws and the um, Allen wrench to go with it. Let's go ahead and take the plate off. What we're doing, all I'm doing is removing the plate. We're trying to remove the cover of the logic board. Best way to do that is to go ahead and Check the uh, gimbal out. Let's go ahead and remove this sticker. Okay. Put all these screws in a safe place. We will replace them or reinsert them again. Okay. One more piece left. Now you have this yaw arm right here. What we're gonna do is use the hex screw that came with the uh, replacement kit. Okay. And let's go ahead and use the uh, hex screw. Loosen up this. Just enough so you can take out the old yaw arm. The yaw arm is now taken off. Slowly lift up. Okay. And let's go ahead and pull the screw off. Got to tap it out. Okay, now we should be able to remove the cover. Now that you have this done, let's go ahead and lift up the yaw arm carefully. And there is a sticky adhesive part of the flex cable that's still there. So we're gonna go ahead 
and just loosen the tape and the ribbon cable. Now we have the cover exposed, put the cover in a safe place. Okay, so now, as you can see, you have the one ribbon connector that goes up the yard arm and into the uh, three axis motor. Let's go ahead, just uh, lift with your fingernail, just lift the tab locks, go ahead and pull it out. And the adhesive, go ahead and pull the adhesive out. There's a bearing right here that you need to slowly remove. We want to take out the yaw arm. Okay, notice the uh, half crescent, the, the, the smooth side is facing where the screw is right here. Okay, now let's go ahead and put a new yaw arm in. Okay, and making sure that the, uh, the screw side is actually facing the uh, smooth one, like this. And now, we're going to go ahead and use the the threaded screw from the broken one to replace it okay now just put it in you don't have to tighten it just have it to a point where it doesn't slide off okay now let's go ahead and replace the ribbon cable this is the main ribbon cable here go into the logic board and see you notice you have double-sided adhesive we're gonna remove this as we we go along, but for this sake, we're gonna remove the first one that's closest to the end connector, and go ahead and place ribbon cable in place right here, making sure that it all fastened and you don't see any part of the copper. And once it's in, the white is not showing. Go ahead and lock it in place. Now we can go ahead and. And we're going to go and remove the other half of the adhesive. We're going to run it on the edge. You see there's a groove right here. And what we're going to do is actually put the flex camo, the flex adhesive side against the yaw arm carefully. Now rest it in place. Now you have that secure. Go ahead and just lightly examine everything. Make sure everything is nice and tugged. Now let's go ahead and put the plate back on. Okay, so you have this sticky tab right here and this spur sticking out of the flex cable. And what you want is to actually have that spur resting against the sticky side of the spur, resting against the top cover. Okay. But before you do all that, don't forget we have the the um, bearing, the ball bearing. Let's go ahead and loosen this up so the bearing can fall in safely. Okay, now softly put the bearing back in place. Lower it. Now the bearings in place, just enough. Now let's go ahead and put the plate back on. Okay, making sure that the uh, adhesive is securing the ribbon cable to the plate. And now you have this space right here. What you want to do is actually recess it down. Now that you have the smooth side of the circle, of a slice circle facing the, the thread side, go ahead and secure. Secure the fit, pulling it snug against the top plate. Once that's all done, go ahead and put the bottom plate on, the plate cover. All right, this is made out of plastic, so we'll just be careful, slide it in. Okay, now you have the hard part done pretty much. Now with the, um, 
the screwdriver, go ahead and replace the uh, screw that we took out. Put it back in. Okay. Okay, nice and secure. Let's go ahead and put the rest in. And all four screws are in place. Once that's nice and secure and it's freely moving, let's go ahead and work on the the other your arm so what we're going to do is actually take the other broken half of your arm we're going to we're going to replace the motor the motor here is still good and all we're replacing is the shell casing and replacing the motor into here so let's go ahead and open the uh the yaw motor The situation I want to use a portable one. The manual screw will probably do better for this particular job here. All right, and there are <clears throat> five screws, and these are all Phillips, small Phillips threaded screw that locks the shell into place. The uh, top one is a little bigger than the, the two bottom. This is the top right here, these two here. Okay, now let's go ahead and remove the cover. And this is the gimbal. This is the yaw arm control board. So let's go ahead and slowly remove it. Okay, it might be locked into place a little bit. Now what we need to do is, if you can see right here, there's a little clip that secures this flex cable so we're going to go ahead and use a screwdriver and release the clip pull it out carefully okay now this is the motor controller let's go ahead and release the clip using your fingernail pull it up okay now what we need to actually do is take this motor and replace it here let's go ahead and do that Okay, and uh, three threaded Phillips screw that is securing it to the uh, broken yaw arm. Okay. Now that we got it removed, this is pretty much out of play now. Let's go ahead and get these are all remaining of the bat flex. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this bat flex off. This is the bat flex, not the controller flex. Okay, now that you have this, go ahead. <coughs> we can go ahead and actually replace, put the motor into place here, slide it into lock, okay? And then all you have to do is just line up the position of the screws and it's receiving in. Then go ahead and put the threaded screw back into the new yaw arm with the motor. Okay, it's just to make sure it's aligned. Once it's aligned, go ahead and lock it. All right. Once this is locked, these three screws here. We're gonna go ahead and actually replace the flex with the new flex we ran up. All right, so now what we wanna do is how we got this new flex right here that we just reapply. We're gonna connect it, connect the new flex to this piece right here, to the uh, control board. So. 
go ahead and carefully fasten it. I'm going to try to get in a position where you can see it. Okay. Now go ahead and make sure it's nice and secure. Once the white line is even with the body of the connector, go ahead and lock it into place. Now we got the motor cable to the motor to the control board. All right, so this one, we just have to carefully secure it into place also. Okay, this one, it's a little tricky. If you do it by hand, you might need a um, tweezer for this one. However, I'm, I've done this many times, so I'm used to doing it by hand. All you have to do is just make sure so the connector is the line is this is lined up and go ahead and lock the connector now you have that lock go ahead and put the board back into place as you can see the the crescent part the flat side is actually facing towards the main logic board so that is the right alignment go ahead and put the plate back on all right and now the threaded screw, the big fat threaded screw goes on the top. And then the slimmer threaded Phillip uh, are on the bottom three. Okay. Should you find this a little too tedious and can't do it, just click on the link below to our website, digitallifex.com, and we can definitely fix this for you. The uh, going rate for fixing a drone like this starts at $100, depending on what needs to be done. <clears throat> we have a three month warranty on all our repairs. And if you like this video, just uh, click like and subscribe below so we can keep continue to make good informative repair videos for you guys. All right, so now we have the yaw motor and plate back on. What we need to do now is uh, go ahead and disable the camera. We're going to take the camera out and then we're going to take the, the uh, pitch motor off also. And this one do require a penelope. And we're going to use a larger penelope size. Screws coming up. Okay. Penelope is running. Okay. This one just angle it a little differently. All right, once we get that penelope off, and that's the last of it. Go ahead and lift the plate off the back. We have to remove the camera before we can replace any other part. Okay. Carefully remove the camera, plate right here, and go ahead and unlock. Okay, what we're gonna do is unlock the cable, but before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and re remove the cover right here. They are, these are cable shields, and this is a half circle cable shield there to prevent the cable from snagging in the event you run into a branch. But um, that cable shield does not do it at all. What you're gonna need for this particular one, once the repair is done and you, pr you don't want this to happen again, you're gonna need one of my gimbal guard. And I do have the link below and I'll show you how to install it at the end of this video. All right, so now that we have this already removed, what we need to do is go ahead and unlock the flex cable. Okay, and now, sir, remove the adhesive 
side of the old ribbon cable off. Now we're going to unwind it by running it around the old flex cable here. Let's go ahead and unwind it. Now that that's unwound, you have your what you're going to get. Okay, these are the that's the connector there. Let's go ahead and put this in a safe place. And that's the SD card reader. All right, so now that we have that unwound, what we're going to do is go ahead and take the screw out. There's a Phillip right here. Just carefully unscrew it. Okay. Put it, take the camera out. Put these boards, camera boards over here. Now what you're exposed with is the the pitch motor and the housing and as long also with the um, old ribbon cable. We're gonna go ahead and just just gonna cut the old ribbon cable out so it doesn't get in the way of our repair. Okay. You got the new ribbon cable right here. What we're gonna do is actually go ahead and remove the double sided adhesive on the other side. We're gonna align it into the housing, the side housing of the new pitch motor. Okay. Like this. And now what we're going to do is take the, take the screws out. We're going to remove the pitch motor housing. All right. Okay, so now this should be another motor, another screw on the other side. Once the last screw is taken out. You should be able to lift the pitch motor right here. And now that the pitch motor is pitch motor side is unscrewed, go ahead and release the old flex that's ripped from the uh, flex connector, and go ahead and replace it with the new one, like so. Just go ahead slowly. Fasten in until you get the white to align with the body. And then go ahead and rest it back into place. Okay. And the crescent side is in. Everything is in place. Go ahead and replace the screwdriver. Screw back into place. Okay. and replace that put all the screws into its right casing there are three Phillips here the top one is a little thicker and the bottom one is slimmer all right let's go ahead and put the smaller screw in to the bottom one okay so now you got pretty much everything done now you have to engage the the new the camera the new flex to the camera and before we do that let's go ahead and okay and put the camera housing back on so what we want to have is the flat side going with the flat side to align okay as you notice you have the round side and the flat side you want the two flat, the fat shaft to go into the uh, flat receiver right here with the, the with the thread exposed. Go ahead and put the uh, screw back in to lock the camera mount to the pitch motor. Now we're going to go ahead real quick to make sure all this everything is nice and locked okay now this is nice and snug now you know the connector is locked into place and we're gonna unwind one more time around but before that we want to make sure we lock the flex cable right here is secure and in okay 
to unwrap it. This is the most tricky part. A lot of people have a hard time locking it in. Right? So try to keep up. This is a little difficult. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and secure it. This is where I want it snug, right against the plate right there. You see where the there's a little groove right here. And you want the flex to actually rest against that groove, okay? So what I'm doing is exposing the last of the double-sided tape, double-sided adhesive for the flex. Okay, putting that into place right here to lock it. And now I'm gonna use a tweezer and guide this connector in to the camera, receiver board. Okay, be very careful. Don't want to damage the flex in the process. Okay, once it's tugged in, snug like this, and the white is aligned with the connector, go ahead and fasten it down. Okay, now, as you can see, everything is now in place. And let's go ahead and put the back housing back on. And the back housing, you see these uh, these cushion, black silicone, gray silicone cushion. You want it against the processor. Snug it in this way, and go ahead and replace the Penelo back in to the slot. All right. There are four pinna lobes. Okay, and the last one right here, I'm gonna go ahead and reposition this so I can access it. Okay. Now, go ahead and put the uh, the shield, the flex shield, back in. And this flex shield here for the Phantom Standard and the Phantom 3 are all made out of plastic as not as opposed to the Phantom 2 aluminum. I'm not quite sure why they did that. Maybe they try to save on material. All right, let's go ahead and put the screw back into place now. Let's screw in. All right. Screw back into one place. Now let's go ahead and put this back on to the drone. All right, so this is the bottom of the drone. Let's go ahead and put the uh, the ribbon cable connector back into the main body of the gimbal. And we're gonna go ahead and put the, the antenna cable back into place. Okay, we're gonna run it through the loop here. back into its socket. All right, and then the other one, back into its socket as well. Try to get to the best angle.
Okay, you want to hear a little click. And now let's go ahead and put the cover back on. This is a gray plastic cover. Go ahead and secure it. Put it in where the snap is and lock it in place. Now put the screws in. Okay. Let's go ahead and put the screws into place here. Let's go ahead and put the final screw in to place here. Once the screw is into place, we can go ahead and put everything back in. Okay, put the gimbal shock absorber or the um, gimbal dampener socks back into place. Okay, so now we have that into place. Go ahead and put the anti-drop pin. Drop it in. And then we took the uh, lock. We're going to go ahead and actually close in the lock. I'm going to go ahead and close it. All right. Put the locking pin into place right here. All right. And now we're going to... We're going to lock the other place right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and test. Now that I have this, it's nice and done. We're going to go ahead and test the gimbal and power it up to make sure that everything works, everything's locked into place, and there you go. Everything works. And now, what we're going to do is. Um, Go ahead and put my gimbal guard on it. All right, so, all right, this is what's going to happen. Uh, if this drone is fixed, but the problem is when it does crash, what's going to happen is going to eject out and the gimbal will break again. I invented this thing called the gimbal guard, and um, I'm selling it. Uh, the link is below, and you can purchase it. Uh, it's 3D printed and it's extremely lightweight. It's designed for a situation to, in a, in a crash situation, it will prevent your gimbal cable from ripping. And this is the small piece which goes, which snugs right here. We can go ahead and install it. Just make sure the flex cable is away from it. So raise it up a little higher than the flex cable. Okay, and then Slowly insert it in, and so we have this secure now. It's nice and secure. It protects this flex cable from ripping or snagging. Then the top piece right here is designed to protect the camera from ejecting. You have a little stopper. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is take one screw off from this gimbal here, okay? And now I'm gonna go ahead and replace, put my flex cable in here. And when you do that, you wanna be really careful that you don't mix this cable here. So you wanna, you wanna insert it, but this flex cable has to be underneath the protector. So I'm gonna lift it up a little bit. Now insert it in, it's in place now. This is protected and now Let's go ahead and put the uh, screw back into place. 
Okay, now that I'm locking it down here, I'll go ahead and put the screw back into place here. Okay, carefully insert it in here. Now that it's well fastened in here, you can see now it's protected. Should it eject, this will prevent it from ejecting and it's free to move around. Plus the gimbal guard that comes with it actually does fit in it. You don't need to remove it. So now this is done. This is Prac with Digital Life and Repair MD with the uh, Phantom 3 standard repair. Safe flying and safe repair.